All right, I'm live. So what are we talking about tonight? We're going to be talking about the Arrow Video Shameless Third Window Sale that's going on right now. I guess I should get a few like kind of like news items out of the way. <clears throat> and the first off I, is like everybody knows this now and sadly Penny Marshall, the uh, from you know the director, the, uh, the famous director and uh, an actress has passed away. Um, she would definitely be missed. If you uh, if you're seeing this and it's not live, you feel free to put your favorite Penny Marshall, like director directorial day, like film in the uh, in the uh, in the comment section down below. <clears throat> For me, uh, it's probably big. I actually really really do like that uh, do that do like that movie. So that was probably my favorite Penny Marshall film. What we're going to do tonight, we're going to go over the Arrow stuff, we're going to go over Shameless, we're going to go over like the other company as well. We're going to go into that, look at some of the stuff, because people see Arrow and uh, they see a really, really good company. If you look behind me, you're going to see like a shelf full of Arrow stuff. I'm going to be like pulling stuff out of that. I got some stuff already taken out that we can look at. If you guys have any questions on any Shameless releases, I'll actually mention some things that I don't have that I wouldn't mind having in my collection. Um, you know, the good thing about this sale is that for all you guys that are maybe a little tapped out right now and you're thinking, okay you know christmas is just like just a week away literally just one one week away uh the sale is going on after christmas so if you're getting any christmas money coming in if there's some christmas money coming your way uh arrow has been smart enough to extend the sale right up to january the 12th as far i think it's january 12th it, you can fact check me on that one but i uh, i do think that the other i guess the other news i got to say before i get right into this is if you're a doctor who fan this season of doctor who um, hey, Andy, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. I'm glad to be home. I'm off tomorrow. My better half comes back tomorrow. I'm actually very excited about that. She comes back tomorrow night. And uh, hopefully I'll be taping something tomorrow. <clears throat> Not on here, but uh, for uh, somebody else. Uh, hopefully you guys got to see or got to check out the uh, video that I did in conjunction with, uh, with Jace here the other day. We did a video on James Bond. We went through the entire James Bond uh, franchise. We told our, we gave our opinions on each one. We gave our favorite Bond, our favorite song, you know, favorite director. Um, so if you never got to check that out, definitely check that out on Jason's channel. Uh, really, really good stuff. And we'll be in in the future. We're going to be doing like a, uh, a spaghetti western one. I think we're going to do that do that here. And I'll. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to that. So today we are talking. I got my bubbly. So Andy, how are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. Have you got anything from the Arrow sale? Are you looking at the Arrow sale? Uh, are you going to be like looking at it for after? Uh... Yeah, I actually like put a link there afterwards. I do apologize. I was super tired the night we did it. Uh, so if I seem a little bit off my game, I hope I wasn't. But uh, it was. Uh, there's a huge time di differential in uh, in Australia and here. So I I got off work and I went until around like four ish, four thirty ish. Uh, doing the stream, but it was it was really really fun, and uh, I didn't get to see the comments in the because I didn't have my uh, you know my phone out to see the comments. Uh, but uh, you know, Jace handled that part of it, so uh, here we are tonight, and we're going to see how this goes. Hopefully, we'll get a get a few people in there. We got Andy in here, so that's always a that's always a plus. So yeah. <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of Arrow Video. Arrow Video is a company that got me to get a region free player. It was actually the Aerodrome edition of the Lucio Fulci Gates of Hell set that uh, made me search out a, uh, a region free uh, Blu-ray player. Because now the Gates of Hell trilogy was, in, was on DVD, right? But for me, I knew that I'm just going to start buying DVDs from the UK. Sooner or later, I was going to start buying Blu-rays as well. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any like issues playing anything. So I do recommend, if you don't have a region-free player, it will change the way that you collect movies. Whether you live in the UK or you live in North America or uh, anywhere you know in between, like in, you know, if you live over in like uh, Switzerland, it, like anywhere across the world and you're watching this video, Yes, if you do have the chance to get a, or Australia, right on. <clears throat> I'm not feeling too sexy tonight, Savannah, but thank you very much. Uh, 
but uh, if you have a chance to get a region free player, do so. It, it, it will change everything in the way that you collect. Uh, it'll open up worlds for you and movies that you never thought you were going to be able to see. Uh, waiting for a movie to come out on Screen Factory and you're just not sure it's going to come out, it, it may have come out on Arrow. Umbrella may have put out in, in Australia. So there are a lot of different choices out there. Now, tonight we're going to be talking about a couple companies in particular. We're going to be talking about uh, Arrow Video. We're going to be talking about Shameless. I will be doing sometime this week a, uh, a holiday horror type of video where we're going to be talking about Christmas horrors. So hopefully all you guys will be here for that. So I'm just going to open up right now the, uh, the Arrow page. Because the thing is that Arrow Video puts out way more than, uh, than just Arrow. Uh, they, they have a whole line of like, um, there's Arrow Academy, uh, just so much freaking good stuff. The brands we got here, well, Arrow Academy, Arrow Video, there's Third Eye, Third, Third Films. Oh, I missed that, I'm sorry. But there's like a ton of films. I wish I had my iPad here, my other iPad here with me right now, the one that I wasn't like using. But uh, just they, uh, um, they have stuff from Shameless, Terracotta, Third Window. Third Window's got some really good stuff. Actually, I was really curious with Third Window. Uh, does anybody here have any Third Window releases? Now, Third Window deals with a lot of like a, uh, Asian releases. So you get like some really kind of cool, interesting stuff there. There's a lot of uh, movies that really kind of like intrigued me, ones that I was really interested in. On the movie Suspiria, the original or the uh, remake, Savannah? I haven't seen the remake yet, so I, I really don't have much <laughs> advice on, uh, on that one. Uh, but if it's the original, I can tell you a lot. I've seen that one many, many times, even in the theater. Oh, the old one? Okay, sure. Go ahead. Shoot. <clears throat> have you bought Suspiria? I actually don't have the Blu-ray in my collection as of yet. It's one that I do want to get down the road. As most people know, Suspiria, I'm an Argento fanatic, and uh, I've, got, I've gone through his entire library many, many times. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his, uh, of his work. Uh, my favorite is Tenebrae, but Suspiria is a beautiful, like, insanely wonderful Nightmare of a film. Okay, well I'm waiting for Savan to do that. We're going to do some talking about uh, some Arrow video. <clears throat> You've got it on bid as well as Creepers. Which version do you have? See, there's many, there's a few different versions of Suspiria out there. And there was like a UK edition and there was a, a North American edition. Now the North American edition was called, was, came up from Synapse Films. Synapse was a Black Label. Oh, that's one on one films, right? You asked me about Black Label before. Uh, go for it. I mean, like, uh, both Steelbook. I'm not sure about, like, the Black Label Steelbook. I mean, go for it. Uh, give it a shot. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Do you know, don't overspend as always. It's getting close to Christmas. Don't overspend. Uh, yes, thank you, Andy. It is a visually, it, it is a treat. It's a visually stunning film, and a lot of other films would take things from it. Uh, the opening murder uh, in Suspiria is, to put it like uh, kind of weirdly, is beautiful and uh, beautifully done. But yeah, so Arrow's got a big sale going on right now. A lot of their stuff, like their Blu-rays, are like seven fifty. You're going to see some sets that are a little bit more expensive, uh, but they have some Blu-rays there for five dollars as well, five pounds. You know, uh, they'll have some DVDs there that are running at at, at four pounds. They have like a uh, kind of a Nordic Noir section so if you're in, in the nordic noir and that's your type of thing if you're in like shows like the killing and stuff like that they do have they do have that stuff if you're in like some of the french detective stuff like magree uh the bruno clemmer uh, you know version of magree they actually do have uh, have that there as well the first see it series of that um so there's there's a lot of different things that uh, that you can choose one yeah seven one dollars is should be a max hey kubrick lover <clears throat> thanks uh jace was the the lead on that one. I was just uh, following, <laughs> but I had I had unusual tastes in some of the uh, some of the Bond stuff. So I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, though. Uh, we will be doing a spaghetti western one, and and spoiler alert, I've got unusual tastes in westerns as well. So you'll you'll see that come up as well. Uh, 
So I'm going to look at, I'm going to show you guys here some, some different arrow releases, some stuff that I, that I like. And I, I wanted to, legitimately, I was really going to pull out everything that I had arrow to show you guys. Like literally that entire shelf, like the, just not the, like the box sets, but the actual movies. And I don't know how many I'm going to, I'm going to go through, but I'm going to show you some of my arrow stuff. I want to give you some like uh, suggestions. So even if you're not going to get it before Christmas, the sale extends till after Christmas. That's the that's the big thing. That's the big deal for me right now. Is that this sale doesn't stop before Christmas? It's not a sale that's ending in a couple of days. It's a sale that's ending in January. Uh, what does that mean for me? Well, that means that uh, if I get any money at all over Christmas, or if I decide to bypass Black Friday, like Boxing Day, which is you know thing here in Canada, that I I might actually just go and get the uh, get the Arrow releases. So what I want to do right now is I want to check and see the date. So January the 9th. So as you can see right here, the Arrow Christmas sale, bloody hell, is going from December 12th to January the 9th. So it, there is like a, there's a bit of like leeway there when it comes to that stuff. So I got some Arrow videos, some Arrow Academy. We're going to look at a lot of that stuff. And I mean like I, I, I got a bunch there, guys. So we're, we're going to look at a bunch of it. And um, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show it. If you're there and you want to ask questions or anything like that on any of the films, please do so. That's one of the things that makes the interactivity portion of this really good is that uh, I can talk about things like all, all I want to, but I may not answer the question that you have about a certain title. Uh, so please feel free to, to pick my brain on these titles um, and I'll be able to um, hopefully steer you in the right direction. So I'm going to start off with some that I, that actually will, that was gifted to me and actually pretty damn good titles so we're going to start it with the uh with the zero buys by uh nico mastrakis right nico mastrakis i hope i got the name right mastrakis i think it's right so nico mastrakis did you know he's uh greek director did uh did a few different films if you haven't seen his stuff uh he's got actually some some very cool films like island of death is a weird film but he did that one now this is not island of death it's not like that um it's actually a really fun little film. We got like Kelly Maroney is in this from like Night of the Comets. Uh, and it, it's an action film, revenge film. Basically we have these survivalists, you know, they're like these survival game people, like they're playing this uh, this paintball game. And uh, and they're the best at it. They're the best at the paintball game in their university. They got bragging rights, you know, they got the girls to go with them. And uh, they go into this area and they're just, they're just there to have a good time. They're at a party and they stumble upon the wrong people. And, uh, action ensues so again i really do like this movie if you haven't seen it again and another thing about this there's this an early like a score by what's his name i'm not looking i want to find out uh zimmer hans zimmer right yeah see early score by hans zimmer uh here so if you're a fan of like uh you know you want to see hans zimmer like an early score by by him as well so that's the zero buys Anika Mastrakis, and I do say it's a really cool one, and it does have the uh, the double disc release as well. So it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It is a fun one. I'm like, like, and this is one that I, I found like when my, when I was young, like through my through my dad. I think it's one that we watched together back in the VHS days, and uh, it's one that kind of like uh, kind of stuck with me. So you know, he did like movies like Hard to Kill too, which is also another film that came out from Arrow Video, which I don't have, which uh, I do want to get Brian Thompson. I think on so that one. Um, but yeah, they say, and I don't know if it's that bad. Like they say, the genre-bending 80s classic with gruesome sequences that anticipates the torture, porn, horrors of Hostel and Saw. I don't remember it being that intense, but it's been a while since I've actually got, got to sit down and watch it. I was going to actually watch it this week, but I, I've just been working all week and my better half's been gone, yeah, so it's been, it's been insane. But uh, I think I might actually watch Zero Buzz tonight. I really do like that movie. Next up is an Arrow Academy film. And Arrow Academy, of course, is like the, uh, they do like uh, the Criterion more style stuff. And uh, this one here is a really good film by, with Jack Plants and Ida Lupina. Hey, Retro Howard, how's it going? Comrade Pin. Uh, the Big Knife, so. Love the movie. But uh, yeah, if you're a fan of uh, you fan of the, of the you know the, the noirish stuff if you like gangster films you like stuff like that this this is an excellent film again it's a robert aldridge film so not a guy you can usually go wrong with 
Great cast too. We got like Jack Palance here, Ida Lupina, Wendell Corey, Rod Steiger, uh, Everett Sloan is in this as well, and Miss Shelley Winters as she's known here. Um, again, one to definitely check out. Now they put out like a, a film noir pack uh, that actually sold out, and you uh, you can't get that anymore. They had like really unusual covers for them, but uh, one of them was the was the big combo. Definitely worth checking out with Cornell Wilde. And, the, and one of the other ones that here is, I'm a huge John Garfield fan. So uh, Force of Evil, again, when it comes to film noir, stuff like that, I try to keep myself kind of a little tight-lipped because I like to see people go into the films like that fairly blind. I find it's the best way to go into like a film like a film noir. <clears throat> now, before I go any further and I get into like my Arrow video stuff and all that, what I, one thing I got to say is that I did watch a TV show this week on Amazon Prime that, I, that I'm going to recommend. I'm going to like just like take a little swerve for a moment. Um, there's a show called Forever with Fred Armisen and Maya Rudolph. And uh, please, if you go to watch this show, um, do it like I did. I had no idea what it was. I was bored. I uh, turned it on. Uh, I had never heard of it. And I, uh, I hit on Forever and I just started watching it. Some person, one person left because maybe they didn't like forever. Okay, <laughs> but but it was really, really good, and it's not at all what you think it's going to be. You can watch the entire first episode and not know where it's going. Hey, hey, Corey, uh, how's it going? We are talking Arrow video tonight, so we're going to be talking about like some classic stuff. We're going to be talking about some like uh, some of the gory stuff that you like, because um, Arrow video their sale is going on right now, and it's going on until January the 9th. So if you got any Christmas money coming in. There, there can be the sale that you go for. Who knows? <clears throat> Next up is one that is a particular favorite of mine. Now, I will butcher the name of this director, so I'm not even going to try. But I really do like this director. Uh, and I really like this film. This is probably one of my favorites of his, of his movies. It's just something that I really, really did enjoy. And it's like kind of an anthology film. Uh, and that is Immoral Tales. Now this, you know, he does deal with uh, kind of the, uh, you know, the erotica aspect of, uh, of filmmaking. So you know that, you know, this is not a movie for kids, but it is a really good film. It's not a, you know, this is not like a sleazy-ish type of film. This is very beautifully shot. It's very well done. Uh, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous film. So uh, basically it goes through like, uh, I, I'm not going to read the back. I'm going to let you like kind of like see... How can you call that an ugly cover? That is actually one of the most beautiful covers, Savannah. And it is because it really, it's really significant to the film. And it's actually very significant to a certain story within the film. This is what you call art. <laughs> uh, Immoral Tales was, yeah, it was an incredible film. So like Andy can definitely back that one up. And this, I would love to have everything that, uh, that was put out by, uh, by this director that Arrow did. Because he did a box set. It was, of course, exclusive to people that... Uh, that got into the uh, you know when Arrow was coming over to uh, to North America, that uh, people like went in and they bought like uh, a certain like uh, kind of like a, a GoFundMe type of thing, and there, this box set was uh, was available. Uh, there's this one I had the Beast as well, and uh, the Beast actually was originally meant to be like a short story on this one here, but it became its own film. Of course, there's the Italian like kind of knockoff sequel called the uh, called the Beast in Space, which is not as good, but. I really enjoy. Oh, so we got two people for more tales. So yeah, it, it is a brilliantly beautiful film. And uh, I can't, yeah, if I was to say like what my favorite story was in this one here, I, I do kind of like the cousin story at the beginning on the beach. I, there is there is a certain like uh, lyrical beauty, like beauty to that that I, uh, that I find really in a, entrancing. Look at me getting all fancy now. Next up is a movie that I think belongs in everybody's collection. And not only do I think the movie belongs in everybody's collection, but this movie came out from Scream Factor as well. If you've got the Scream Factor edition, that's nice, but get this one. <clears throat> Especially now, that's probably on sale. And it is right here. This is White of the Eye. Now, Donald Kamal is a, a very unique film director. He was a... Um, basically, when White of the Eye was, was presented, this was meant to be like just your typical slasher film. Uh, what the eyes anything but your typical slash room if you've seen this you know exactly what I'm talking about um, this I'm guessing if you have not seen this cubic lover this would be your type when it comes to the uh, the silent slasher film <clears throat> now what are the eyes known for just for not just being like a uh, an excellent film but being a genius genius film <clears throat> now this one here 
Corey is not our region. It is uh, it is region B. Uh, Andy, I do strongly recommend this one. And I think it's what David Keith, isn't this right? Yeah, David Keith. David Keith and Kathy Moriarty. Um, it has to deal with a serial killer. Now, what's really special about the Arrow edition of this film is this has probably one of my favorite documentaries of all time. Uh, Donald Kamala had a really, really interesting life. Uh, he made films that were uh, some were controversial. Even his life itself was uh, was mired in uh, in controversy and and uniqueness. He was a very, very different um, type of director, and he uh, and he, he he lived, you know, short. Uh, Oh, David Keith is amazing in this, somehow. <clears throat> now, the documentary Donald Kamel, The Ultimate Performance, because, you know, obviously performance is one of the films that Donald Kamel made uh, with uh, Mick Jagger. Uh, but uh, this, this for me, is Kamel's best work. This is the best thing that he did. And this documentary belongs in everybody's collection. So this is one that, you know, if I was going to say a pick to grab during the sale, if you're going to get anything during the sale... Um, even if you hate a performance, man, this is a completely different film. This is a, a fantastic, uh, this is a fantastic movie. Uh, there are very few films that like really hit me uh, in the like in a serial killer genre in the way this did. What did the eye Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and uh, Rampage Back in the Day were were three movies that that kind of that kind of stuck with me. And I guess I'm going to go like one step farther. Maniac did as well, but a What did the Eye is a very very strong. Um, it's very strongly done, and the life of Donald Kamel, even if you don't like one of his films, is amazing to uh, to find out about. You will really, you will rewatch this movie, and you will rewatch this documentary. This has double the. Uh, this, the basically, this is bonus for you right here. This is a this is a double double whammy for anybody that's looking for uh, if you like horror, if you like uh, if you like documentaries. Uh, either way, this is one. It should be in everybody's collection. I uh, strongly recommend White of the Eye. It's a different film. It's a unique film. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really good film. And the people that get talking on the, on the documentary as well. Nicholas Rogue is in the Rogue's in this. We have Mick Jagger, Kenneth Anger, James Fox. Just a ton of people talking in that uh, documentary as well. Next up is one of more of a, uh, a classically something that you will see here on my channel a lot. And that's a Jello. And this is one that I really, really like. It was a different one. Um, and it wasn't beca because it wasn't so much about the mystery as it was about like the, kind of the journey uh, and where and how it would end. That is the bloodstained butterfly. So again, this is a beautiful cover uh, from Errol. And if you've not seen the bloodstained butterfly, oh, excellent! So just let me know when, and I'll keep an eye out for it. Four dollars is a lot, man. Uh, so that's a good that's a good drop. That's okay. I it is perfectly understandable. And when when I get it, if it's okay, I'll unbox it on here so everybody can see it. Uh, so the blood stained butterfly again, another fantastic film. Uh, if you love Jello, you, you got to check this one out. Basically, uh, this one kind of deals with a, with a courtroom aspect, so it's kind of different in that way. So. A uh, a man is charged with uh, with a with uh, with a murder of this uh, of this young girl, uh, which he vehemently denies doing. It looks very suspicious for uh, for him, but there's uh, her kind of her boyfriend character. He's uh, it's different, uh, and 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 it's got a really great ending. Uh, so uh, if you've never seen this one here, I do recommend it. It's a great jello. It's a great ride. It's a great journey, and, and it's a really fun film. And as always, Arrow puts out, puts out a great package, including a visual essay here by Troy Howarth, uh, commentary here by Alan Jones and Kim Newman, so you know that's going to be good, and uh, some uh, some great act acting as well. Really good job. I see. <laughs> Andy, we're on the same wavelength there. Next up, it's the best movie canon ever put out. <clears throat> like, legitimately, like their best, the, the, mo the highest quality film that Canon Pictures ever released, and the closest thing they ever had to an Oscar contender, which probably didn't get one because it was a Canon film. That being said, it is an amazing film, some amazing performances, some nail-butting action, and it just is incredibly tense all the way through, and that is The Runaway Train. So if you've never watched The Runaway Train with John Voight and Eric Roberts, you know, Rebecca de Mornier, I definitely do recommend this. This is a great movie. Uh, it is an incredible watch. 
and I have to say, uh, 110%. Pick, you know, if you like this, this style of movie, definitely pick it up. Uh, it's unusual that, like, Canon put this out, because Canon isn't exactly known for uh, their, their, <laughs> their classic stuff. Kurosawa, yeah, I think Runaway with Train was written with Kurosawa. If you're, yeah, it is, actually, based on a... Uh, so if you're a fan of Akira Kurosawa, he actually wrote the screenplay for this film. Uh, this is truly a classic film, and it's not something that most people would associate with canon. Most people associate, like, cheesy action films and, like, kind of, like, uh, sex exploitation with canon, but this is neither of those. It is actually a really, really good film that I think everybody needs to see. Um, so, as you can see, there's a lot of really good releases from Arrow Video. What's up next? Well, uh, one of my favorite directors of all time is Brian De Palma. I really got to watch that De Palma documentary, by the way. Um, but this is super, super cool. And this one stars Michael Caine, and it has, and is Dressed to Kill. Well, Michael Caine, and of course, Keith Gordon, and... Uh, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it tonight. Uh, Angie Dickinson, uh, looking super, super gorgeous in this, in this one here. And, of course, Nancy Allen, as always. So, if you have not seen Dress to Kill, I actually saw this one in theater back in the day. Uh, there's that shower sequence with, uh, you got the Criterion Edition of that one? Great movie, great choice. There. And uh, I started to get most of my, after like Blowout, I got most of my movies from Brian De Palma on Arrow because I just really like the, the editions that they put out. Uh, truly, truly love this film. I'm I'm pretty much down with anything uh, when it comes to Brian De Palma, but I just that one just stuck with me for a long time. Oh, he just ordered Dress to Kill. <laughs> awesome. Need to upgrade all the Palma films. Let's. Nancy Allen was in the Robocop movie. She was the uh, you know his uh, his partner. Actually, the Sartana set, I was just looking on the Arrow site uh, just at work today in between, uh, well, I was maybe looking at, on my break time. And uh, <laughs> so the, uh, I did not see the Sartana set there. So I would say it must be pretty low in quality, in quantity, sorry, not quality, in quantity. I would look on the, if you don't see it on the Arrow site, I would definitely look on the Amazon site. Uh, I'm going to be try. I'm going to try and grab one after Christmas. Uh, the post office strike actually uh, kind of stopped things from uh, from from getting to me and stop me from ordering from away. Uh, obviously, a lot of stuff that I got is going to. Hey, Scholar, welcome, dude. <clears throat> I actually I'm doing one tonight. We're talking the Arrow video sale. Uh, we're going to be talking Arrow, talking a little bit about Shameless, talking about a little bit about Third Window. If anybody knows any Third Window stuff, please like, at any time jump in and let me know. Because uh, I'm actually very curious about that label, and I'm uh, I'm very intrigued. So next up is a is an Arrow Academy one, and uh, Jules Dassin. Anything Jules Dassin if you could, that you can pick up, it's going to be really good. He uh, he does some great stuff. Uh, had Rafifi first, and, and like that's over there. Uh, but I wanted to show this one here. I'd love the cover of this one too. And The Naked City by Jules Dassin is an incredibly amazing film. I, I do strongly recommend it if you like kind of like the noir style films. Uh, there's a you know, there's a million stories in the Naked City. This is one of them. Uh, I uh, great like you know Jules Dassin at L.A. CMA like a 52 minute documentary with, with the director. Australian film. Naked City in London. <laughs> No, Naked City is like in uh, Chicago. Like sh Chicago's a Naked City. Uh, this is actually a brilliant film. Uh, you know, it's Bear Fitzgerald, Don Taylor, uh, Howard Duff, of course, and uh, inspired by the uh, what's his, his name? By the infamous tabloid photographer Ouija. Uh, oh yeah, this is a classic Kubrick lover. Uh, trust me. Just Google the uh, trailer afterwards. You know. No, I'm talking as soon, as soon as you see. Yeah, the Naked City is very much. It is very much like a uh, uh, a great, like kind of like a noir mystery type of film. Marx Brothers had a print already. I really thought I could wait on that one. I, I didn't think that was going to be one that was going to sell out, Elmer. Uh, but I've been wrong before when it comes to this stuff. Uh, there have been so many movies that I've had to buy later on because, uh, like, on the on the secondary market. 
Next up is a classic jello. I think we can all agree this one's a really good one. And this is What Have You Done to Solange, an early role by Camille Keaton, who of course we're going to be in uh, what's a Spit in Your Grave. Uh, now, really, really, really good film. If you have not seen this movie, uh, don't Google it or anything like that. Go in blind. It is a great jello film. Uh, well, well done. Uh, definitely set. The setting is extremely fantastic. It's an Ennio Morricone score, so you know you're going to get a good score with this film. And uh, it's one of the you know the What Have You Done tr trilogy. Uh, you know, there's What Have You Done to your to your daughter to your to your daughters. What Have You Done done to Solange. Uh, fantastic, fantastic film. Great release. Great transfer on this film. Uh, wonderful audio commentary with Alan Jones and Kim Newman again. Uh, we got a conversation with actress Karen Ball on here. Bell, Bell, we got like, uh, do we have anything with uh, Camille Keaton on here? We should. We don't, uh, it looks like. Uh, but we do have a uh, Squirrel Girls in Peril trilogy. Now make sure you've got and watched all the three Squirrel Girls in Peril trilogy before you listen to the McKenzie, um, Michael McKenzie, McKenzie documentary, like for audio visual essay, because it will spoil all the <laughs> <laughs> all of the uh, all of the mysteries for you, uh, so make sure you grabbed all three of the movies before you actually uh, listen to uh, visual essay. But it is a really good visual essay. Visual essays are one of my uh, new favorite things to uh, to have on a uh, on a on a film release. Now, if you're uh, familiar with like uh, with Scream Factory, just recently what they did was they put out Dracula Prince of Darkness, which is one of my favorite uh, Dracula films, and uh, like in, in the Hammer set. Oh really? And that one right in here is the Hounds of the Baskervilles. Now this is a Hammer film, uh, more of like in the classic line. We got Christopher Lee in, in a good guy role for a change as Henry Baskerville. We've got Peter Cushing as uh, as Sherlock Holmes here as well. Andre Morel. Uh, my favorite film. Uh, I'll, is um, people on here know this one already? But my favorite film is the 1974 film *Black Christmas* by Bob Clark. It's the movie that made me fall in love with movies, and it's the movie that made me want to know more about films than just turn it on and watch it. I wanted to know what was going on behind the camera. I wanted to know how, how the how it was scored. I wanted to know. Uh, I wanted to know everything when I saw *Black Christmas*. It uh, it's it stuck with me, and it's a movie that I watch several times every year, especially during the summer year. Hope that uh, it's a good answer. But this is a really fantastic version of, uh, of The Hound of the Basket Girls. If you've never seen this, please definitely check this out. Hammer did a great job with this one right here. Hey, morning, Darren. Oh, Tokyo Fist from Third Window. I was actually wondering about that one. There's a few like really good Third Window films. Did you, find the, did you like the uh, Third Window release? <clears throat> oh, really? You saw this as a kid? Nice. Yeah, I, I'm very interested in some of their stuff. You got a lot of really good releases there. There's movies like Pluto, and uh, just some really different stuff that I that I want to see. And I do normally go for the different stuff when it comes to uh, stuff like that. The Fairy Tale Killer, Tale of Killer. There's you know there's a lot of that type of stuff that that I want to check out. But yeah, definitely check out the Hand of Basket Girls. <clears throat> Ton of features on here as well. <clears throat> got to take a drink. My uh, my voice is going. I've been working like uh, like some uh, pretty like long shifts recently. And my voice gets used a lot in my uh, in my job. Feature it on Andy Morel, The Many Faces of Sherlock Holmes, a 1986 documentary on Sherlock Holmes. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Now, you want a movie that's both good and has one of the most awkward scenes? You're uh, oh, welcome, Peter. Hey, we got we have a newcomer in here with Peter Campbell, and say hi to Peter, guys. Uh, welcome to the movie club. Hopefully, you come back, and I don't bore you too much. We're talking about the Arrow Video sh sale that's going on right now, the, the Christmas sale. It's going on from January, from December 12th to January the 9th. So even if you can't grab anything before Christmas, uh, after Christmas, they're going to have some like, uh, yeah, they have some usual titles here you know, with the third one and stuff I, that I want to check out. And right now on the Arrow sale, a lot of them, uh, if you want to buy them on DVD to, to check them out, it's, they're going to be like four pounds each. So it's a good time to, to dive into like something that maybe you, that you never uh, checked out before. Speaking of weird, though, uh, Madman. You don't even say the name, Madman Mars. <laughs> Madman is a really fun, like early '80s slasher film. Uh, it has the most awkward hot tub scene that you're ever going to see. Uh, <laughs> but 
man is this thing packed with stuff this has a full feature length documentary on here uh a ton a ton of great stuff uh like the early career of gary sales the madman producer discussed his career in the film industry conversation interviews with like different people music inspired by man man myers hey adam um hope you guys are looking at the arrow stuff i'm actually gonna be looking at this afterwards i every every year like whether i can get something or get like barely anything uh what i do is I, is i go there and i do up a wish list and then then i suck up to my better half and see if i can get anything it'll all depend I, i've got some good stuff for christmas but uh i may buy by past boxing day to do this arrow sale because it's really really well done oh really the vhs oh, that is nice uh yeah i am a really big fan of this film now this one here i got from uh not from Arrow themselves, but uh, if you're familiar with the with the site DVD Beaver, uh, a while back Gary Two's was like was actually selling some. Uh, oh, you just got your first Arrow. Which which one did you pick out? Was selling some stuff, and I actually got that from uh, from Gary. Uh, DVD Beaver is one of my favorite sites because he actually like do the different like versions of films, and uh, and put like the different features and all that. So I go there all the time. Kaltiki, well, did you know Kal So just to let you know, Kaltiki Adam is one that I'm getting for Christmas this year. Kaltiki the Immortal Monster. Uh, me and my better half are huge fans of like monster movies and we love like the cheesy stuff. And we're huge fans of Mario Bava and uh, Ricardo Frito as well. Uh, uh, so uh, that was one that was on uh, both of our lists when they had the last Arrow sale, which by the way was a magnificent sale. They had like stuff that was in a print and everything. Uh, you don't see sales like that come along every year. I already like stated that the last arrow sale that that happened was the was the movie collector event of 2018. you only have new releases left you must have a lot of good stuff there scholar uh, it's it's gonna be a fun one i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of great features on there as well i'm looking forward to that i won't get to see it till christmas so you'll get to see it before me uh, but uh, Cal Tiki, guys, if you haven't looked into that one, that's a really fun film. It's pretty much like kind of, think of it like an Italian version of The Blob, with, uh, but just a bit gorier and uh, a bit different. But uh, definitely, definitely worth checking out. Uh, Adam chose well with, with Cal Tiki. It's a really good film. Now, you want to... You're in Manchester. Oh. So, I actually have only been to, uh, to, to the UK once. I was, was in... Uh, is it was in London oh, war films good choice uh, but uh, I am eventually hopefully moving to Morocco in the next few years and I actually will be having to fly over to London like in order to, to shop for films because Amazon not there <laughs> so this is coffee if you're a Pam Greer fan if you're a black exploitation fan and you don't have this one in your collection yet, why don't you have this one in your collection yet? Foxy Brown is great, but Coffee is Pam Greer's best film. Yes, I'm going to say it. I'm going to state that Coffee is the best film by Pam Greer. Uh, she's badass in this film. She's actually gorgeous in this film. She's gorgeous anyway, but she's really gorgeous in this film. This is Pam Greer in her prime at her best in what I consider to be the best movie that uh, that she did uh, act in. Of course, she's you know she plays Nerf Nurse coffee coffin in this uh in this movie and she's getting revenge she is getting revenge and she's doing a good a great film by jack hill so if you've never checked out coffee and you're into black exploitation films you're into very attractive women pam greer even down this day you're on my google doc list of of the many girls from hollywood that i definitely still have a crush on is the queen and this is the one this is the movie like get all of her movies pam Greer, you're gonna go right with with pam Greer films coffee and foxy brown you know you want those top in your list black mama white mama you want that one on there as well but uh you want coffee first even though i am the guy that says it's time for tea so next up is one that means a lot to me it's one that i grew up with it's uh it's it's a canadian film and uh again it's a bob clark film yeah, Bob Clark did a lot. Bob Clark had a huge part of my of my life. Move it from a Christmas story to Murder by Decree. Arena's a good film too. Yeah, yeah, she, it's good because she's in it. So she, I, I point she no because because Pam Greer is in it. But Bob Clark, yeah, Bob Clark had a huge impact on my life. 
And look at this one right here. So this is Porky's. I love the way they did the release of Porky's. If you've never seen this film, uh, think of like, you know, like American Pie or something like that, but way, way better with a much more of a kind of a social conscious, uh, still funny, but just does an amazing job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, I can Christmas, and probably because of a shot in your area. So that happens sometimes, you know. I don't eat fish, and I lived in a fishing village for a while. You have all the really... Oh, Skullder, that rocks. I need to get more of the Pam Gurr stuff. I don't have it all. I got Foxy Brown. I got coffee. I need to get, like, the... Uh, there's a couple others I have to get. So Porky's on here. Set in 1954. Kim Cattrall, an early role from, for Kim Cattrall, who later wanted to be in Sex in the City. Uh, but, uh... Great, great film. Definitely check it out. Just got it for this. It's a fun film. I think that some people like putt. It's been so hyped up, and I think it's been hyped up too much, so that people like go in nowadays. They're expecting way, way more than you know the, than it can even possibly deliver. Scolder, you're in my, you're in my cool book because Porky's is so so awesome. Oh. Yeah, see, Peter, Peter loves coffee. Coffee's great. Uh, these are really cool. So if you like the uh, the Japanese style films, Nakatsu is like a uh, was like a studio in Japan. Uh, class of 1999. That's a good film though. Uh, I don't have that. I guess I got it on a DVD, but I got to upgrade to the Vestron edition of Class of 1999. Really, really, really fun film. Uh, but here we have the Nakatsu Diamond Go. So Nakatsu was a, a studio in uh, Japan, one of their older studios. Is it the oldest? Yep, the oldest film studio in Japan. Um, so it, it, there's two volumes of this right now. It does sound like a porno, but it's not actually. Uh, Noir, oh, Criterion Eclipse box set. Good. I actually really want to get that one. So I have you check this one out. So this has some really good films on it. It's got one black and white film, I think, or and two color if i remember correctly or is it the other way around uh so it has the the voice without a shadow which i actually really like that one that's the movie i wanted it for uh we also got on here the uh the red pier and uh actually that's also a really good film and the and the film that most people grab this one for is uh the uh, Citeo's the rambling guitarist which would be uh, like a series of films so now each one of these here by the way so they each get their own disc so you're not like uh stuck with two on a disc or anything like that each of these here get their own disc there's a, like they have a few features on here as well video discussions with with japanese uh cinema expert jasper sharp so uh really interesting to check that and check out that uh, very cool there's only two of these right now oh cat of nine tails and rawhead rex both really great releases uh, did you grab the uh, limited edition of cat of nine tails darren there is a lot of nudity but if you, i think and if you look back on it today it's really not a lot what like if you were to put on something like American Pie or something like that, uh, it would be like it would seem tame. I think if you went back and watched Porky's now, it's a very tame film compared to like uh, to the other films. Just Amory, still a fantastic release, and, and uh, definitely worth picking up. They, they did a great job with that. James Franciscus, yeah, James Franciscus was in uh, Cat of Nine Tales. Him and. Uh, and Carl Malden. Yeah, Carl Malden plays the, cause plays the blind guy that uh, is actually uh, like really into uh, crossword puzzles. You chose well. Dargento is always a solid choice. Even Dracula 3D, which, you know, not a good movie, but uh, it's a fun watch with a bunch of people. I'm a Joe D'Amato fan. And the, you want to watch a Joe D'Amato film and like and not be like, like super sleazy? You want to watch this one. Death Smiles on Murder. This one, Joe D'Amato was actually trying to do like less sleazy stuff in actual real films. So, uh, yeah, kind of same. Um, Klaus Kinski, can't go wrong with Kinski. Uh, Death Smiles on Murder, I do recommend checking it out. Now, one of the best yellows that they do, that they do have that doesn't have the word, uh, it, it is pretty bad. It's a horrible film, Kubrick Lover. I'm not saying it's a good film. I'm just saying... It's watchable with a bunch of people because it's one of those MST3K style films. Uh, it's sad that he has one that's that's that bad, but uh, it's the only one that's really that bad. Like there's other ones that are, that, you know, the later ones that aren't as good, but uh, still have like, but the early stuff is actually really, really good. Well, I mean, oh, that, uh, 
I have like an addition addition of that one from uh, the 88 Films put that out too, right? I have the uh, Shriek Show edition of that, like the uh, dark film. I'll, I I really remember that film. I would like to have seen that put out by a. <laughs> it's it's a it's a, a neon green pragmatist. Fantastic film. I should do so like one on like uh on like Italian films, like in kind of like maybe more intense films. Uh, don't torture a duckling. Speaking of intense films, my Criterion collection is actually fairly small too. It's just over there. Uh, this is Lucio Fulci. This is an amazing film, uh, and I really, really recommend grabbing this edition of this film. I miss out on the slip cover. There was a slip cover originally for this one here. But uh, if you have not watched Don't Torture a Duckling. Oh, yeah, that is a fantastic one. That is the one that I did manage to pick up. I missed out on some of the other like limited editions. But Don't Torture a Duckling is one of your all-time favorites. This is a great movie. Uh, Florinda Balkan is in this film. Uh, she does a great job. Uh, it, it's it's a really, really hard performance. And uh, and, and she, she truly pulls it off, both being like, you know, freaky and sympathetic you got lucky oh you got the slip nice man uh thomas milan you know did a lot of like uh yeah i gotta agree with and it is definitely a must own barbara boucher i think barbara boucher is in this one as well yeah yeah barbara boucher is in this one uh you know you can watch this with the red queen kill seven times you know both films starring barbara boucher uh but this is really really good uh you haven't checked it out Strongly, strongly recommend it. Next up is one that's not for everybody. I'm gonna put that out there right now. This is uh, this movie is not for everybody, but it is good for what it is. And uh, this was put out by Bob Guccione. So anybody who knows what this movie is, but even before I pick that, put a like show it on the screen. They're gonna hear the name Bob Guccione and. And they're probably going to know <clears throat> what this film is. Anybody want to guess what this film is before I pick it up? Exactly, Kubrick Lovers, Caligula. Uh, now, done by, uh, of course, Mark McDowell. Uh, a lot of stars in this movie. Now, I wouldn't consider Death of Smalls on Murder. It's, you know, it's definitely... It's got its gore, but... Uh, it's different. Uh, I like it. But, yeah there no nudity it's just as you can tell she it's helen Mir was she, was it helen Mirren in this one too it probably is you know i can't remember. oh yes so she was i totally forgot that uh, i just recently watched age consent over again yeah see the when they did this like bob guccian of course is the owner of a hustler magazine and he was like considered himself to be an artist uh like a serious artist he actually was a very very like if you watch the documentary on Bob Guccione, you you can actually learn a le learn a lot about the guy. Penthouse, thank you. Okay, <laughs> Penthouse magazine. So um, that tells you how much I, I read some of these magazines, right? So Caligula was put out by yeah was put out by Arrow. Uh, it is a great film. Uh, I, I do think it's a great film. I think it was heavily maligned back in the day. Tyndall Brass was a uh, was an artistic director who uh, who they chose to do this. You know, after this was Larry Flint. Yeah, and they had the movie, you know, The People versus Larry Flint. I should remember that. Thank you for Kubrick Lover fact checking me, and I'm liking it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Tindall Brass' career was like suffered a bit from uh, from this film, which is a shame because he put out a lot of really good stuff. The Key, uh, All Ladies Do It, uh, you know, classics in the in their time. Uh, you know, definitely not for everybody, but things that I that I would say that they're actual like good films. You may still need to see Clegg. Yeah. It shows us wedding. Wow. That's a long film, man. <laughs> Nostalgia only. Um, yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, it was like the... When I was a kid, yeah. You know, when I was a teen, it was like Penthouse Letters. It was like a big thing. Um, but yeah, this is a long film, especially depending on the one that you're that you're watching. So there's a conversation with Laurie Wagner in here. Uh, T Tinto Brass, the Orgy of Power. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, this is a fantastic cast, like Peter O'Toole, Matt Mattel, and you know, this was pretty, there was like, I'm not gonna lie guys, this is pretty raunchy, don't put this on like when the kids or anything's around, 
but uh, you know, but it's Caligula. What do you expect? How else could they have gone with this movie when you're talking about whoops, whoopsies? When you're talking about uh, the debaucherous like the yeah, the dodge showed him out of Caligula too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Caligula needed a sequel, right? Um, yeah, that's when Joe and Mata got into his really sleazy stuff. So I'll tell you what, I actually really do enjoy this. So what I'm going to do, if you guys don't mind waiting a couple seconds, I'm just going to go over right there. You'll be able to see me. I'm going to pick some more movies that I think we that are that are interesting to talk about from the Arrow Collection and uh, give you some more ideas. Yeah, there's a Caligula too, much in the same way. There's a Patrick too. It's not really. <laughs> Uh, like a legitimate sequel, but uh, it's a uh, it's a film, and it's by Joe D'Amato, and it's when Joe D'Amato not quite at his sleaziest. Now that that would be the the Ricardo Sofridi era of Joe D'Amato, but still it's pretty sleazy. I'll be right back. That's like Patrick. Have you ever seen the movie Patrick with Richard Franklin, directed by Richard Franklin? So Patrick's in a coma, you know, and he's like he's got these psycho you know, those telekinetic these psychokinetic type powers. Um, so that's Patrick, right? So pa a turn remake Patrick too, right? Patrick walking down the road, gets hit in the head with a Coke bottle, makes people have sex. Very different. Be right back. So there we go. For all of you that stay, there's just a few more <coughs> arrows to uh, talk about before we go into anything else. <coughs> it is a handful, but it's not that many when you really think about it. We got through those pretty fast, actually. <coughs> Some of these are going to go through fairly fast. I'm going to bring this one up again. I bring this one up every time we talk about Arrow. Oh, I want to share in your call second sight films. I really want that release, Darren. Uh, that has both of the movies there, and I do really like When a Stranger Calls Back. I think as far as sequels go, it's a really, really quality sequel. So, first off, we have right here, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. I'm going to keep dr like drilling this one into your guys' heads until you pick it up. This is a really good film. Not only is it a really good film, it has a great documentary. Uh, Paul Joyce made a documentary on uh, on Sam Peckham. It's called Sam Peck by the Man of Iron. Um, it is an incredible documentary, but what's even better about this one, and get the limited edition while it's still available, it's really cheap to buy actually. Uh, it has more than 10 hours of unseen interview footage, like taken, killed from the doc, you know, that didn't make it into the documentary. 10 hours of footage, it's a really good documentary. Uh, definitely, definitely, look, see this? It's got a beautiful like slip cover, uh, Sam Peckinpah. I'm gonna like, until you guys start buying this film, I'm gonna keep mentioning it on every Arrow stream that we do. Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia. If you haven't picked it up, it's a really good film. War Notes is a fantastic actor, and that documentary is really, really good. <clears throat> oh yeah, definitely one of their one of their better releases. Yeah, and, and you know, it you can always throw away the slipcover or sell it on eBay. You can sell it on eBay, man. You can make some money off the slipcover. Because it's got a bit of the shiny into it. So, you know, see, you go, you buy the buy the movie, you sell the slipcover on eBay, you make back at least part of your price. Some people go nuts for those things. Next up is one. Uh, this was put up by by uh, Criterion as well, so I'm sure at least one or two of you guys. A oh, wild bunch is amazing, <clears throat> but uh, I think this one's this one's underrated. You know, it's this is not the wild bunch, obviously, but uh, it, it's just a really really great release. 
You're not a big fan of Jellos? I will win you over on Jellos yet, man. I will win you over on Jellos. Um, so this is more of a classic Western one. Uh, I really like this release. Great movie. Uh, Criterion put this out as well, but I just love, I really love the look of this release. If you've seen the Criterion disc of this and you've seen this disc, it's almost shamefully, uh, this looks shamefully better than, uh, than like, like aesthetically than the Criterion disc does. And that is John Ford's My Darling Clementine. I love the look of this. It's got the kind of that pulp Western novel type of like cover to it. Uh, this also, by the way, it uh, does slip out. <clears throat> and it doesn't just have one movie. It's got My Darling Clementine on Earth, theatrical version. Uh, we have like the uh, 2013 documentary by the Directors Filmmaking Association. Uh, with you, we got like a uh, a second movie. Uh, we have like the uh, My Darling Clementine two versions. Of My Darling Clementine. What's the other one here? Oh God, yeah, White Earp. No, French and Marshall. French and Marshall's on this as well. So yeah, so you get like two versions of the film. You get My Darling Clementine. You get Frontier Marshall. Uh, yeah. Oh my darling, oh my darling. Yeah, I'm not going to sing. Uh, you don't want that, guys. Uh, we even get like radio adaptions of it here, two radio versions of it. We got like a 1947 adaptation of My Darling Clementine with Henry Fonda as Earp and Richard Conte as Doc Holliday. Yeah, definitely one to get, man. Um, 1949 Hallmark Playhouse edition, which has Conte playing the role of uh, Earp, like taking over the Henry Fonda role there. So really worth, worth checking out. <clears throat> So there are two versions of this film. Uh, I have them both. This is my. This is definitely my favorite, and this is the Killers. I really, really love the Killers. I think this is a fantastic film, wonderful film to watch. This has Burt Lancaster and Ava Gardner. Uh, I'm a huge Ava Gardner fan, uh, and, and an amazingly huge Burt Lancaster fan. So if if you don't, if you haven't watched Burt, Lan they put out a lot of Burt Lancaster stuff uh, on Arrow Academy. And definitely pick some of it up. Uh, Burt Lancaster is such an underrated actor. And this is such a good release. Uh, so if you have not watched The Killers. There's also the one with John Cassavetes as well. I have that one over there. And, you know, Lee Marvin. But uh, this one here. This is the version of The Killers to, uh, to get. You know, definitely you can have them both. But, uh, but yeah, the, the original is my, is, is my favorite out of the, uh, out of the two of them. Next up is uh, one, uh, this definitely stands like the, the test of time. Um, there's actually a play of this uh, one right now uh, out there. And that is, uh, this movie's by Sidney LeMay. And it actually has the director's episode of Sidney LeMay out there. Do we have the Cassavetes Criterion box set? Not yet. And it's a really great set though. I really need to get it. Uh, I like Cassavetes, the work you do with Gene Rowland. Hey, Jace, long time no see, man. <laughs> <clears throat> We are talking the Arrow Video Sale, Jace, because Arrow Video's got a sale going on December 12th to January the 9th. So if you can't, you don't have it, I, it it's a good one if you like that style of film. <laughs> and we start out with Network. A fantastic movie. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Network is one of those movies that uh, if you had took this four times, if you've never like sat down and watched this movie, this this is fantastic. Uh, when I was in uh, when I was going in acting, uh, Network was one of those films that I actually like because there wasn't there was no online like going and grabbing script anything online. I actually went to find the uh, find the screenplay for. I was doing a uh, doing a tape because uh, you know back in the day what you did is uh, you would do uh, monologues, do like kind of performances, and you would send them out. And uh, one of the ones that I did. Was uh, I did I did three uh, on the tape. I remember this like it was yesterday. Uh, I, I did the uh, I did the Mad as Hell speech. I did uh, the uh, the scene from uh, the the diner scene from uh, from was it Rocky and uh, one from uh, Saturday Night Fever. But yeah, this is uh, this has always been a favorite film of mine. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, and because you know because of that too. Uh, because of my you know, my days were like when I was going to go into acting, I was always like looking for a film, uh, films that had like solid, like solid tight writing, and uh, maybe that's why I went into writing myself uh, down the road, and uh, and journalism came about and stuff like that, because I was always looking for. I always really wanted to uh, something that 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 just leapt off leapt off the page in in my, in my head. 
something that I could actually project. Now, this is one I mentioned before, and this is The Beast. So if you've never seen The Beast, it's another one by the guy that did Immoral Tales. Uh, it's a different film. It's not for everybody. It's kind of an erotic, I guess maybe we can say Beauty and the Beast type of tale. You want to wanna put it that way. Uh, pretty simple story. Actually, it kind of was. It was originally meant to be part of Immoral Tales, but it, but it was uh, it was cut out and was ex and expanded upon to make its own uh, to make its own film. <clears throat> yeah, you wanna <laughs> you wanna try his name uh, because I uh, I've been like okay I really should say the guy's name, but I uh, I'm, I'm really like concerned about butchering it. Uh, completely different film. Of course, the Italians again did the Beast in Space because that had to be a thing. Yeah, it, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty out there. Burrow, says okay, Burrow. We're gonna call him Burrow. We'll go with Burrow. That's a good one, right? That's a good enough name. Next up is a classic, The Car, uh, with James Brolin. And I really like this movie. My my uh, mother-in-law actually, uh, my stepmom, uh, mother-in-law. No, my stepmom actually was a huge, was huge fan. She was like completely like. Freak, this movie freaked her out, like really freaked her out. She was scared of this one. Uh, if you're like uh, an old-time soap opera fan or something like that, then you are uh, you got this one? Just as good as Christine? Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, is it a strip? It's, it's like basically this movie here is uh, literally what, what you would think it would be. It is a car with nobody in it, like, like taking down people. Uh, like if you were a soap opera fan and you knew you watched Young and the Restless, uh, the character, there's an actress on there, I think Melody Thomas or something. Uh, what's her name? Uh, she plays Nikki. Uh, my, my grandparents used to watch Young Restless. I actually, uh, so if you don't like that artwork, the good thing about Arrow, Darren, is this. Then you have this artwork to go with, which actually is probably pretty cool. I love that. The car is a fun ride. That is awesome. So yeah, so with Arrow, you've always got something to fall back on. There's always a secondary artwork, so that's always a good thing. Uh, yeah, great release. Uh, yeah, the girl that played Nikki on Young West, my grandparents used to watch that when I was, uh, when, uh, when I was younger. Uh, but uh, definitely, definitely worth watching. The next up is a favorite of mine. It's near and dear to my heart. Uh, as I mentioned on here many times before, uh, if, you, if you listen to, uh, to like... Uh, to, uh, to like say to Stephanie and Brian when they're doing like Jets the Discs or uh, the Screamcast or, or Pure Cinema Podcast, uh, we listen to any of that type of stuff. Then you know that Stephanie uh, is a big, big fan of John Waters. That's kind of, she's an unabashed fan. That's one of her favorite directors of all time. Uh, I have like De Palma and there's another director that really like everything he does pretty much like it just steals my heart in a way that I just severely love it. And uh, this, this is one of the big ones. And this is Larry Cohen. Uh, I, I really, really like Larry Cohen stuff. I do. Uh, I like. I got Full Moon High here, and, and, and I actually do like the film. Um, the stuff, though, is probably one of his best films, right up there with its with the uh, its live one. Female Prisoner Scorpion. Oh man, I would love to have that set. It's expensive, but I really want it. But guys, if you have not seen the stuff, please watch this. Uh, this this is a great movie. Uh, Michael Moriarty is in this. Michael Moriarty is one of those unsung actors, just really good character actors. Is, is great in a in everything. He is of course you know for years with Law and Order and stuff like that. But uh, the stuff is it's a classic. Uh, the the song you know the the jingle for the stuff is actually really good too. He actually had somebody come in and like design a, the packaging for uh, for the uh, for the stuff. It's really really cool. A Law and Order. Can you go like the Law and Order man? Uh, that was a classic back in the day. Now this is the uh, the in, the other inside cover right there. I didn't show that on a lot of these, but kind of cool. That's it, man. Michael Moriarty's role in stuff is is incredible. Uh, I don't remember his character's name now, but I, I really Mo right. This is not Taki though. He's his character's name is Mo. It's live. Uh, sequels are fantastic. You know, Q doing Serpent. Don't have the stuff? 
yeah, get the stuff. His name is Mo, because, you know, he always wants Mo. <laughs> he gets some money, he always wants Mo. Uh, really, no, that's seriously, that, that's, that's his character's name. And he's kind of a badass character, too. He's really, really cool. Uh, there's a 52-minute documentary on the stuff here. There's so many, like, choices for me to watch tonight. I'm, I'm actually, I really do want to go back and dive into some Arrow stuff. Very underrated actor. Uh, and uh, a very strange guy, too. Like, very uh, different uh, guy. I really am a, a huge, huge fan of Michael Moriarty. He's one of those guys that back, back when I was, when I wanted to act, he was one of the guys that I studied. There are certain actors that I, that I did like actively study their work, and he was one of those because he could do it, and it, it seemed kind of like kind of almost effortless. Stuff is a great fun little film. It is Peter. Um, all right, I had to put this here. I had to put this in. We mentioned it. I had to do it, and it's. Are you eating the stuff, or is the stuff eating you? It's a great like, and you know, and you know, it's still it's a, it's a great take on like commercialism and like the fact that people will sell you any companies will sell you anything for the uh, for the profit margin. Something very very relevant today. Just was <laughs> he loves stuff, or does he love Foxy Brown, Pam Greer? Now, Jace, what you probably didn't see because you didn't come here earlier was a. Uh, the link, yeah, it was in Link, yeah, he was in Link. Uh, Moriarty was in like a few really good films. Uh, it, where is Moriarty from? Uh, I always thought he was Canadian because he did so many Canadian films, but I don't think he is actually. Uh, but Foxy Brown, I did Coffee earlier, Jace, which is my favorite Pam Greer film. Foxy Brown's another fantastic movie with Pam Greer kicking ass. Uh, again, great cast, another Jack Hill film. Gotta recommend it. All right, now we are getting to Abel Ferrer. People talk about Miss 45, they talk about a lot of his other films, but not a lot of people talk about this film. And it's a shame. I think people still have yet to discover discover this. Almost Canadian, Michigan. That's pretty close. <clears throat> I've yet to discover this uh, this film, like in the way that it, that it should be. Uh, and, and I, I got to say, I recommend it. That's not Driller Killer. I thought that is a fun film. Uh, it's a, it, it's one of the uh, King of New York. Great cast there. Like we got Christopher Walken, Dave, like you can see right there, look, Dave Caruso, Lawrence Fishburne, Wesley Snipes, Steve Buscemi, uh, an incredible cast. Great, you know, great amount of features. Uh, if you haven't watched The King of New York, uh, it, this is a really, really good film. And yeah, yeah, definitely more people should. should. Oh, yeah, it is Abel Ferreira. Yeah, uh, he directed this one. Uh, written by Nicholas St. John. So that we have like a bunch of ideal commentaries here, interviews. There's a documentary, a French documentary on Abel Ferreira called Not Guilty. A uh, short film about the long career of Abel Ferreira. Documentary looks at his career, including the interviews with his two collaborators. Uh, so definitely, guys. Got Steelbook release of Foxy Brown. Uh, that is a really cool one. I got a couple. Tell you what, after I do this, I'll show you some of my Steelbooks. Ha ha, Jace. See, I knew you'd love that one. <laughs> a, a much better film for Chris Walken than uh, View to a Kill. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. There's a line in this that I'm not going to say on my channel <laughs> in the next film, but everybody knows it. And much like everybody knows, <laughs> much like everybody knows that line from uh, from Megalodon, you know, Shark Attack Three. Uh, everybody knows this line. It's said by uh, by Robert England at the beginning of the film, and this is eaten alive. This is the Toby Hooper film that that nobody talks about, and it's uh, actually really really good. I love this movie. I'm a huge fan of a, of a, of a Neville Brand. I've always been a big fan of that actor, and anything that he's in, I uh, I kind of I kind of gravitate towards. And he's in this one right here. Uh, this has uh, Marilyn Burns from uh, from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This was a movie that he did after Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I don't think like he'd made a classic. I don't think anything was gonna was gonna like live up to that uh, to you know to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, 
um, you know, like Mythos at that time. It, you know, it's it's its own movie. It's it's fun. <laughs> exactly, Darren. Uh, and I really like this one. Uh, definitely a good release to check out. If you haven't checked it out, Roberta Collins is in is in this. William Finley. Uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, really great cast. Uh, really eclectic cast, and, and just stuff that that I super, super love. Next, I want to give you a Babbitt one anyway, like one of the later Babbitt ones, one that I think is just a lot of fun. There's so many great Babbitt to get. Uh, you know, if you haven't got any of the Babbitt releases from Arrow, there's a way to go. You can go and grab like as many Babbitt releases as possible. Every one of the releases with Babbitt are usually like two or three discs long. They're like they're stacked uh, with like like alternate versions. Hey, Voodoo, man, how's it going? Uh, Aloha. Uh, are you hoarding up? Are you hoarding up for, uh, are you hoarding for, uh, for, for Era? Uh, but this one isn't. This is just a single disc release. Uh, I'm Arrow spokesperson. I got that with Vinegar Syndrome too, but yeah, I actually am a huge fan of Arrow. Uh, but yeah, Bay of Blood, this, I would love to see this one get like one of those, I'd love to see some of the, some of the early Babas especially get like the, the, that, the release, that Argento style, big hard box release. If you're nasty in the UK, right. A Bay of Blood's a really fun film. And it, there's a lot of humor as, uh, <laughs> here he goes, no, I don't think so. Uh, but, uh, are you happy to streaming? Are you going on the stream and stuff? Uh, but, uh, this is a really fun film. Of course, you know, it's a definitely kind of a proto-slasher film. Uh, there's a lot more dark humor in this movie. Uh, there's scenes in this that look like, I don't know, there may have been like a film. There may have been, I don't know, a, a certain franchise that kind of lifted a couple of murder sequences from uh, from this film right here. Uh, you know, a little Friday the 13th thing. Uh, well, Bay of Blood is a, is, a, is a really great film. Uh, and it is filled with like horrible, horrible, greedy people. It, it really is. Uh, basically... This rich girl, this like this countess, this old lady, she gets killed, and it's it's kind of cool. I'll, at the opening of the film, there's an old lady that's killed. Right right after she's, we do there's there's no like mystery or secret to who kills her. Uh, it, it it is shown immediately. Immediately after she gets killed, somebody kills her killer, and it goes on from there. It is a uh, smorgasbord of death within this film with some people that are, are some pretty slimy, greedy relatives, uh, and you know, that, that, that I want to inherit. A Bay of Blood is a blast to watch and, and I do like recommend it. It's a really good film. It's a fun Bava film and it is gorgeous. So if you've never seen it, it's all about the greed. Uh, and, and, and it, and it is good. Um, Joe Dante talks about Mary Bava on here. Our gentle Bava Fulci, the Jello gems of Dardano Sacchi. Uh, another great like uh, feature on here. We got a commentary with Edgar Wright. Uh, you know, trailer commentary, co commentary by Edgar Wright. So I'm guessing that's probably one of those, uh, what you call them, like Trailers from Hell type thing. Uh, Twitch of the Death Nerd, which was the other name of the film. Like Radio Spots. Just a ton of really great stuff there from, uh, from Arrow Video. Some really amazing stuff. Now, before I go on any further, I do have another Arrow release there. There are a lot of shameless stuff that, that's there on CR right now. So if you're looking to get Tom, Top Sensation with Edward Finich, good film, uh, a different film and a darker film than, uh, than you would expect from, uh, from the way the movie starts out. It definitely dives into to much darker territory. But Top Sensation, that is on sale now on the, uh, uh, during this, uh, during the sale, all the colors of the dark, uh, the uh, the fantastic Sergio Martino film, that one is on sale as well. So is the Church and the, and the Sect as well. Both of those are on sale. Uh, the Arrow website, if you if you go over there, uh, that's some of the shameless stuff that's that's going to be put out through uh, through Arrow. A lot of really really great stuff. So uh, it's not just the Arrow's own releases. You hate the Church, man. I love the Church. <clears throat> Yeah, they do look great. They do amazing releases on their stuff. See, Cubic Lover would tell you it's not a good movie. I am. <laughs> I always think it's a really fun film. Uh, it's by the guy that did uh, that did Stage Fright, uh, and uh, and acted in the uh, movie The Demons with Lam for Lamberto Bava. He, uh, he actually plays a guy with the with the silver mask on. His name is Mikhail Mikhail Suave, something like that. I'm I, I, I'm I'm butchering it. It it's not supposed to. <laughs> <clears throat> a lot of the, the Italian films are not, they're meant more to be about the atmosphere than they are about the linear story. 
linear code hoarder physical man physical is the way to go <laughs> it's we, we're, we're back and forth some people like it some people don't that's why if you don't like that one maybe like the sect or maybe you won't like either one but either way it, they're they're fun films you know if you like that style of film uh definitely go into it and definitely check it out yeah save the cannibal god i don't i didn't see that one uh it's a shame if they did because i i gotta say i've been pretty like pretty uh solid with most of my shameless releases now there were some that i know there had to be like a couple things like like were clipped out because shameless is in the uk and, and they never lie about the fact that when uh when something's taken out of a film it's right there right on the on the box itself they'll let you know okay you know this release like doesn't have like it has like 30 20 seconds missing or something like that they're really good about telling you about that but uh that release i, I don't know anything about it actually i do have like the i think uh, anchor bay or go underground just to slave the cannibal gods but it's never been one of my favorite films two minutes yeah that's the thing they, and they will tell you right on there like the new the, their new york ripper is uh oh, like, say, another another lover of the church uh that's the thing there's always something for everybody if you don't like one film you like the other uh but uh Save the Count of Gods was never one of my favorite films, but yeah, like like New York River. Then again, that had stuff like taken out of it too. Like, uh, but for me, if I want the ultimate edition, I gotta have the Shameless edition along with whatever uncut edition is out there, because I, I do really I do think a lot of the company, and uh, I think they've done a lot like in bringing Italian films into Dallas when when nobody when nobody else was looking at when you know when Arrow was like kind of looking at them and Blue Underground was putting out a few things like Shameless was coming out and they were like you know they were proudly Italian, uh, they were putting it like like release after release with the with the with the yellow covers so i uh I, yeah i'll give them i'll give like sometimes they'll have some stuff that's cut because they they can't uh because it is the uk but uh and if it's animal stuff yes keep it cut out lisa and the devil that's a good release um then there's another tally savalas film there <laughs> so uh so django is gone for now because Blue Underground threw a hissy fit and said they have all the rights. <laughs> That's probably not a nice way to put it. I'm going to put it like that. I was a little pissed. Uh, I got them both. I think I think I got them both. Uh, I got like three editions. I got three or four editions of Torso. I'm not going to lie to you. I would... Uh, oh, man. I'm jealous, Jace. I'm jealous, man. So this was the original one that they put out this is not the original Django this is the original Django that Arrow put out the Django prepare coffin actually it's Django prepare coffin it's a really really good film uh if you haven't seen it it's actually kind of super cool I won't give away the twist even though it gives away in the end and the back right there but uh don't read the back of it just go in and watch the movie uh super super fun film if Jace if, if anybody's is there from the UK and they like go to a store and they see like a Django copy there <laughs> grab that for me a torso was directed by Sergio Martino. Um, so uh, if you're a Sergio Martino fan, he did a lot of really good stuff. Like uh, your vice is a lot. Uh, my vice locked door. Oh my God, it's a long title. The Vice Movie. You pre-ordered it months ago. Ah, there you go. Django. Great, great, great from Django Chain. Uh, not quite, but uh, this is the... No, we, Who's in this one? Terrence Hill, right? Yeah, Terrence Hill. Okay, yeah. Terrence Hill plays Django in this one here. You know, a few people have played Django over the years. It's the only one original, but a few people have played him. Hey, Culture Trini. How's it going, man? <clears throat> hey, 4K. Ah. Uh, let them put it out. Here's the thing, 4K. I'm going to I'm going to be blunt right here. They did a better edition of Django. I think we can all pretty much say, yeah, that's why they chose him because he looks a bit like, you know. Uh, they did a better edition. So, I don't care. I want the I want the good edition of Django. I've had the other edition of Django. The so-so edition of Django. I want the good one. So, I don't care what Blue Underground has to do or what kind of deal they have to make. Don't don't make Arrow pay through the nose for this. This isn't their fault. They were misled. Hey, Jack, stick. How's it going, man? Um, yeah. 
The Western one. Yeah, we were going to do the Western one. We're going to figure it out. I'm going to figure out my Google Hangouts. I'd, I want a copy. I so want a copy of that movie. If you're watching this channel and you like me and you're in the UK and you have an extra copy of Django, feel free to send it my way. It will go to a good home. Uh, oh, man. Because that had Texas audio on it, right, too, as well. That's, oh man, I'm so bummed about that one. But I have gone through a ton of air releases tonight for you guys, and there are a ton more over there. Uh, just to you know, just to name a few uh, that are that are fun to uh, that that you could pick up. There's a you must have too, yeah, text idea. See, ah. <laughs> <laughs> there's you know there's a bunch of great stuff and uh tell you what this is movable i can bring this over there let's go over right so it's like when i'm on my psvr and i'm like uh what am i gonna do i'm gonna see if i can turn this damn thing around So I won't be able to read your guys' things for a couple minutes, but here we go. <laughs> so yes, that's a... All of this right here... is Arrow Video. I have one of the crazy money ones. I got the it's in price. Here's things like the Battle... Oh, without without honor and humanity, which is a great great release, the uh, Cat of Nine Tails, Last House on the Left, Hills of Eyes, Society, you know the Death Walks Twice, George Romero set, the Black Cat set. I think that one's gone out of print now, unfortunately. Speaking of crazy money ones, here we go, uh, the Russ Meyer collection, Battle Royale, the 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 best decalogue to get. Don't get the uh, the Criterion one. Get this edition. Uh, Deep Red. This one here is uh, Bloodbath, I think. Yeah, Bloodbath. Stray Cat Rock, the American Horror Project. The Videodrome edition that they did. Uh, Broad Reanimator. Outlaw Gangster VIP. Dr. Fives. Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. That was a, like, that stayed in print for a long time. Necromantic 2. It's okay. Contamination, I really like. The Thief, that's the best edition of that. Blood Rage, Brain Damage. Society's a fun one. And if we, it, and you know, it does have Bid the Gorn there. So we got like Retaliation, which I think is a really good movie. Happiness of the Katakaras, that's, there's a fun film for you. Uh, it's, that is Takashi Mikaya, by the way, guys. Uh, We got like cemeteries of the crosses there. Uh, that's the original Cat of Nine Tales. I got that as well. City of the Living Dead, of course. Lucio Fulci. I'm a huge like Fulci fan. Phantom of the Paradise. We have like Re Return of the Killer Tomatoes. I'm loving to see. I love to see all the fun, all the love for uh, society there. Mask of the Re Mask of the Devil. Great movie and a really great documentary on uh, British horror. We have like Evil Ed, which is a fun. A pistol for Ringo, uh, the return of Ringo, really, really good spaghetti westerns that I seriously recommend. We got Nightmare City, which is a really fun, cheesy one. Uh, Remo Williams, definitely one to get if you don't have it. Day of Anger is a fantastic spaghetti western. We'll talk about that one, Jace. Uh, we got Invasion of the Body Snatchers, again, like the best release of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, period. Exterminator, Comedy of Terrors, Hell Comes a Frog Town, it's a fun film. Big Trouble in Little China, The Fun House. The Last American Virgins, actually really good tender film. Uh, the Burbs, that's, that's a classic in my opinion. The, and then we're getting to some of the uh, more of the Bava stuff, The Girl Who Knew Too Much, I think is highly underrated. Uh, Blood and Black Lace, again, another amazingly beautiful film by Bava.
and that's oh god five dollars on night i'm going to think is that one there it's kind of kind of dark to say uh black sabbath black sunday killer clowns of course i got the <laughs> brandon the kill there's actually two versions of that one there uh again like some classic uh uh pa brian de palma with uh obsession tenebrae i have many versions of that film bound is a really really good film see if i can do it down here we got fury by brian de palma sisters deranged uh Derange is actually a really good film with robert blossom wild geese which is a really fun one my better half likes movies like that hellgate uh some great stuff here like the train uh thieves highways amazing film brute force is a really good film with burt lancaster we got things like sullivan's travels here uh the maturian candidate um as you can see, we have like uh, the other edition of the Killers, uh, Cinema Paradiso, uh, Rafifi, and to show you some like the original stuff, they did, like the white case stuff. So there's like the there's the spirits of uh, spirits of the dead. That's an anthology film made around a Polar anthology film. Which Manchurian Candidate? The original. I'll show you. Oh, I like the funhouse. Oh, the Fury, you did a good job on the Fury. I'll show you. So this is their edition of the Fury right there. It's okay. Uh, I, I stick with the original with the, with the Maturing Candidate. So originally when Arrow came out, I'll show you guys something there. So they used to do these like cases here these like window box cases is a free region free i'll check for you in a second and basically what it would be there'd be like four different covers and you could like flip it around there'd be two covers on, on one side and two covers on the other you could flip it around and have any cover you wanted there would be like a poster on the inside and a booklet and uh the dvd and sometimes it'd be like post there'd be cards and stuff like that that probably is region bj so i'll check now in a second Because I know some of them that came out. I'm just going to put this here for one second, guys. Find out for um, if it's region free or not. No, it's region B. I'm sorry. <laughs> but just to show you guys, kind of like, give an idea. You put out all these window box covers. So, like, stuff like, this is the original one I got for a uh, house by the cemetery. The window boxes were fun, weren't they, culture training? I was actually really disappointed when they stopped doing them. There's the uh, Inferno. That's uh, definitely a Rick Melton cover right there. If you've been following Arrow stuff for a while, you know the, uh, some of the artists that they use are, and Rick Melton was one of the ones that they used. It had like a lot of voluptuous uh, ladies on it. This is the uh, Bird's Crystal Plumage. This is the original edition that they put out. This is the last window box that I picked up was Red Scorpion. I actually didn't think it was going to be a window box. I was actually very surprised. You do need that origin player. This is a really gorgeous edition of Phenomenon. ton of features in that one as well. And uh, before the... There's a better edition out now, which uh, I really, really want. And, and I, I sadly cry for. You know, if you like their documentaries and stuff like that, there's Arrow Films as well. Yeah, that, it did actually... Vittorio, uh, and actually uh, his version of it, he, there's there's like some some uh, controversy over it actually. Ray Harryhausen special effects titan. This is a really if you like Ray Harryhausen, amazing documentary. And when they started doing their uh, their DVDs, they were all white cases. So you're gonna see, and Corey, you're gonna love some of this stuff. This is their copy for evil two evil eyes he did do the music on that if ina Morricone did the music on, on a few of the earlier gentle films and they actually there was a falling out that's why he, the later on got goblin to uh and to do the music and other people basically had a falling out with ina Morricone. this is the uh the card player 
when the first I ever bought was Slaughter High. Yeah, they did actually. There was like a there's a falling out between them. I think they got over it, but you know. That's Beyond Reanimator, and yes, that is signed by the uh, by Jeffrey Coombs. I'm very proud of that. This is a uh, Super Bitch. <laughs> That's the name of the film, aka the Blue Movie Black Blue Movie Blackmail. So since I'm over here, got to see him live. I'm super jealous about that. Scream really. I don't have that one. The Night Child was also put up by... Yeah, that is the sequel. Actually, the sequel to, Re to Reanimator is the Bride of Reanimator, but this is the second sequel. What's really good about Beyond Reanimator, and that what's really good about that edition, is there's like an hour-long documentary talking about every version of Reanimator, every sequel to Reanimator that never got made. Yeah, it is the second sequel, Wolf. This is the, my first... Uh, release for pieces. Don't you love the cover though, guys? I know it's super gory, but come on, it's as fun, isn't it? They also used to do window boxes for their, uh, for some of their DVDs as well. This is their window box for, uh, For Tenebrae. Um, Tenebrae is one of my favorite movies of all time. So right up there with Black Christmas, guys. And you know, there's many, many different covers for uh, for Tenebrae as well. There's just a slip it out of the window box just to show you what it looks like. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I decided to do this at the last minute just so you can get like a good breadth of their stuff. Oh, Joe Bob Briggs. I love this cover for Sleepless. They were going to go with those like Masters of Jail, like subtitle, you know, kind of subtitling, but they never actually kept with it. Savage Streets, Tear at the Opera. This is a gorgeous as well. We get there. My original DVD copy of Stendhal Syndrome. With the gorgeous Isaiah Argento. Christmas Evil. Love this. I also have the Vinegar Cinema Edition as well. Okay, I gotta cover this one a bit. Island of Death. That's also by Nico Mastriakis, who uh, did the uh, the movie The Zero Buys. And last but not least, I'm gonna save 4K's favorite for last year, and that is Savage Streets. Love this edition of this film. Love the cover. And yeah, this one actually does include, like many of these releases, I just open up and show you there. There are like posters included with these. I just, I don't normally take the posters out, but I'll, uh, I'll take it out of this one here. And if you're wondering what the p posters were like, begrudge work. Yeah, it's very, very Christmassy actually. It's probably the most Christmassy Christmas horror movie out there because of, of how it ends. So here is the poster we did to Savage Streets. On the back, they'd always have like different releases for their Arrow stuff. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. It was a little bit extra that I wanted to do on here for you guys tonight um, to really get into uh, some of these releases and. The one, what I do I have left to show? Well, there is Reform School Girls, which I actually saw this one in theater originally, guys. And a couple of like small box sets is like the yeah, Sleepless. I think is one one of his last really good films. Uh, the you know for Giallo style, this is their extra rental set. I'm not sure if this one's still available. It's got Maniac Cop and Cheerleaders, and also got Re Re Return and Revenge of Cheerleaders, Penitentiary and Penitentiary Two. By the way, is on here and and McBain. I do apologize if I'm missing some of your comments because I'm just trying to grab the stuff so you guys can actually see it. Uh, 
Hey, Rich. So next up is the Ephemeral Films. This is the Claude Chabral collection. This is the uh, first volume of it. I actually really do like this uh, set because I'm a huge Ch Chabral fan. And uh, which one I watched? Le Femme. What's it called? Le Femme Infidel was a really good one. So really didn't die this one here. I think they're all good on that one. And guys, last but not least, the one that started it all. They did they really? Did you like it? So this is the Gates of Hell trilogy, the one that made me go region free. So if you're a fan of Lucio Fulci and yeah, you get ever get a chance to get this, even if you get the Blu-rays, it's still a really good release to have. So uh, that girl is uh, Linda Blair. So since I'm over here and I'm in a, a giving mood tonight, I'll really quickly go through these. This is my Life Force Steelbook from Arrow because Arrow does do some really great steelbooks. This is their amazing steelbook for the beyond. Also they did a really great one for Theater of Blood. Maybe I should start doing my videos like this so you don't have to see my mug and you can see the movies instead. Next up, this is an FYE release. This is Bride of Reanimator. No, this is Reanimator, sorry. Exactly, it is Christmas time. Treat yourself to a region free player and get some, some of these releases. This is their amazing release for Rabbit. I really love this cover, by the way. I don't think it's horrible. Well, that's not Bride, man. That's, uh, that's actually the original reanimator. I just fumbled it when I said it. <laughs> so this is Shivers. So we see we get the Shivers too. Which is my favorite of his early films as well, by the way. Next up is the Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits, which I, I really do like. Not everybody likes this one, but I... I thought it was a fun film. The uh, demon set that they put out, they put out Demons. And Demons 2 on the same steelbook. And yes, they uh, each did get their own disc. They're not out of print, but actually coming back in a regular edition. And very gorgeous steelbook for edition. Are some of these expensive now? I'll be honest guys, I really don't know when it comes to like things going out of print and stuff like that, unless I something that I miss out on. I usually who knows, maybe I'm sitting on some here that are worth a fortune. And I uh, and I <laughs> really don't know it. Uh, yeah, my I never got so much into the steelbook stuff as a lot of people did, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna lie there. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I, I there are some that I that I do like. Oh, your friend with some time bandits? Are you serious? That that is freaking awesome. Hi. No, no, I was not asking for you know who. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. That was an incredible film by Terry Gilliam. It is a classic, and uh, not enough people like uh, Savannah. She's an awesome. She's a steelbook collector. So, there, Savannah, you got a little treat there. I would have been super stoked to to be in a, in a Terry Gilliam film. But there you go. 
I don't want to go through all the shameless again because I did do that one a few times. I've, I've done that as this as well, but I've got like a shameless like case over there of stuff. Yeah, I, I probably actually do, but the thing with me is that a uh, Facebook. See if she's on Facebook. Is that a uh, oh? Have a good day at work. It's gonna be better than my day at work now that much. His father was Danny in The Shining. <laughs> that is cool. And now, like you know, the uh, the sequel's coming up. Well, you know, uh, what's it called, Mister Sleep or something like that. Doctor Sleep. It's one of those, something like that. I'm in the opposite thing. I'm, I, I'm every day. I'm like, do I want to be on Facebook? And I'm like, kids are on Facebook. I got like old pictures on Facebook. So, yeah, I guess I'll stick on those type of things. I always go back and forth. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm a. Uh, but I'm a no. I'm a huge, huge fan of the, uh, of Arrow stuff. Is it is a teacher? That wouldn't surprise me. Doctor, thank you. Uh, doctor Sleep. Uh, but I. Uh, it's good to see, like, yeah, you actually get like a a, a child star that actually stayed kind of grounded. Uh, that's that's actually kind of cool. But there you guys go. That is my entire Arrow collection. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I didn't plan to do it like that tonight. Have I ever had the Arrow release of Squirm? I don't actually. I do like the movie though. I actually have like the MGM release of Squirm uh, here, like the original release, and it's one that I do need to upgrade. That's like slugs. I've got like a, a kind of minute marquee, like release of slugs. But I, I would like to f get like, because it's a super fun, cheesy movie. You think of a movie called Slugs and you think, oh, that's going to be like just kind of gross and stuff. Uh, but uh, it, no, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's actually a fun film. It's uh, super cheesy. But yeah, if I had to say, you know, there's certain movies that I, that I would recommend. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tonight. I, I had a blast talking to you guys here. Uh, always like uh, definitely check it out. Check out Jason's channel there, and uh, that video that we did together with uh, with the James Bondy and stuff. I did actually put a link to that afterwards. Uh, <laughs> night culture training night, everybody. Uh, anybody on here that has a channel, you know, keep an eye on like their uh, on on their on our commenters in here because a lot of these commenters are actually really fantastic YouTubers in their own right. And uh, <laughs> she got a lot of trip, man. Uh, because they really do some stuff like Gory Gory Cory like does some amazing videos. I got to catch up on your last one, uh, Pete. I, Peter, I hope you come back. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you here. You're now a permanent member of the movie club. Uh, we look forward to having you here again. You definitely were an active member. I really do like that, Andy. Thank you for being the first person to come in and comment as well. Uh, we got like 4K Cinema. We got we got so many great people in here tonight. I'm um, you know. I'm Aaron. I'm just, you know, I'm just the ringmaster here. You guys are the movie club. Thanks for joining me here in the movie library tonight. And uh, I gotta go watch a movie. Uh, you guys, you guys are awesome. And I'll tell you one thing, I am also always learning. I'll talk to y'all soon. Hey there, Edgy. Have a great evening, guys.